This is Pathos from Symphony of Heaven, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious Podcast. So, thank you for joining us. We can jump right in if you want. Absolutely. Let's go, man. Yeah. Tell me about Kingdom Come Fest. Or Kingdom, yeah, Kingdom Come Fest. Oh, man, that was such a great time. Um, It was really hot, super hot. Um, We actually didn't think that we were going to be able to pull the show off because there was all kinds of bad storms around, and it's this place is literally out in the middle of nowhere in a field in the middle of nowhere. And so we, we were pulling up there and we're watching the radar and like, man, this, this ain't good, but it split and went right around the festival. Really? And but then after that, it was like, I think it was like 105 heat index. And so it was, it was super hot. And, um, but we made it through and we, and the set went off about the best set we've ever played. Uh, everything was just really laid back and a lot of fun. So what was it like being back on stage after so much time away? It was so nice. I almost surreal. Like uh, you, you try and t- I try when I'm on stage, I always try and take a few seconds to kind of just take it in because you're focused so much on, on, on playing your parts and, and singing and, and playing and all that and making sure everything's going all right. Uh, but I, it was really nice to be able to sit there and just kind of like, ah, we're back. Right. You know, it's been how long a year and a half and it's, we're finally back and it feels so good to be pushing some air with the amps and just feeling the thump of the, of the kick drum. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I know as a fan of music, I got to my first live show two nights ago. I went and saw sublime in the dirty heads, but not metal, but unbelievable to be in this space where there's people and there's music and, Open yep. air. I mean, it was unbelievable. I got chills standing there. I was like, man, this is what I miss the most. Yeah, it's it's uh, it was it was really nice to see things felt normal again, yes. and they hadn't in so long. And I just pray it stays that way. Uh, if people need it, people have to have that. You know, yes. we got to see friends and and, and catch up with people and, and give in person. You know, you have to have that. And so. I think I think maybe this sounds weird to you, but maybe you, you'll agree with it. I think the metal community has a bigger community and a bigger family like, that you don't find in pop and in country. And when that's taken away, I know myself personally, it seems weird that I miss the dude that I used to hang out with you know, next to the bar at, a, at the club here because I do. Yes. Yeah. You it's when you it's it's every metal show, especially um you know, in, in the in the little community that Symphony is part of, the little Christian metal community that there's a lot of bands and like minded uh, 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 philosophies and things. But we're all we're such a small community that when we do come together, it's like a family reunion every time. And it's 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 just they're hanging out and playing metal. And it, it, it yes. has such an underground um, organic feel to it that yes. when you don't get that, you're not seeing your family for yeah, yes. right years sometimes it's been and it's 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 not it's something you just long for and miss and it was so nice to be able to get back to it yeah so. and, he, and even outside of just you know the specific christian metal scene you're talking about there's a great big metal scene that i think we're all part of and you can identify with that really is family oh, yeah. I, I don't see these yes. guys maybe once a year on a cruise or something but i mean they're family that's the best way I can explain it. And it sounds probably ridiculous to yeah. anybody listening to this. And it's not ridiculous because that's really where you make lifelong friends. The guy you met at the concert, you yeah. know, one of my best friends, that's the first thing when we had finally met in person, that's the first thing we did. We went and saw Nile. We had never met in person just online, right. but, and then we're lifelong friends and actually David, our, our, our bass player, but, and, but you go to a local show and you see people and it's you're just part of this 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 movement this group of people that you know you come from all different walks of life all different Beliefs, backgrounds everything and yeah whatever there and everybody is yeah everybody's just together 
and there's that wall that's broken down and it's it, it's unlike anything else. So I think, we, I think we need more of it to break down all these damn walls. Oh, I agree. I do. If you could just get everybody to come to a metal show and and really see what it's about is, you know, some people get scared and like, oh, they're, they're everybody's in a pit and hitting each other. Yeah, but somebody falls down. They're everybody stopping and get them back up, yep. you know, and then, OK, and then you pat each other on the back and you go at it again. Right. So yeah, there's nothing like that. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's the only way it should be. And I'm going to say one more thing about it before we get back to uh, Symphony of Heaven. Sorry, I'm, I'm sidetracked. I think that is. I lost my train of thought here, but I think that is the the biggest thing, like the love of the riff connects everybody and it transcends yep. whatever your beliefs are, whatever your race is yep. or anything. Yep. Yeah. I always liked, I always, uh, I always try to sports is a big thing and I still love sports. Unfortunately, I can't watch a lot of sports anymore right. for, for obvious reasons. But uh, you know, I always, as a kid in sports and that's, that's what you uh, are taught that everybody comes there and it doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Everybody's there for the for the same reason, right? And and that's a good thing. We should we we need less, you know. Everybody just constantly trying right. to do this, and there has to be com- You can't make friends with people and, and do all if there's so many walls. You have to be able to break down walls for people to prog- to make progress oh, yeah. in anything, I, you know. Yep. So. All and right. music does that great, just like sports would still does in some ways. But, you know, but but I'm going to just correct you for one second. I think it's yeah. not music. It's I think way more the metal music or dark or deeper music, because you don't find that from people listening to Britney Spears or the Backstreet no. Boys. No, they're there to see the, the lights and the shininess in their seats and with whatever maybe little a group of friends they come with right. and they don't come outside of that when it's in the extreme arts it's it's something here that yeah. everybody you hit shares. it right on the head i don't know yeah it's something spiritual in a way uh that transcends kind of there it, music is spiritual in nature so it's it connects people in a deeper way especially the more extreme music there is because people are honest with things with how they feel, you know, or they're or more outgoing, yeah. more. Yeah, exactly. So. So I know I said, I'm not going to talk about this anymore, but now we're down a rabbit hole. So just bear with me. Do you think that's something that is you're born with or it's innate, or do you think that's something that you have to be turned on to? Because I don't know that like my first exposure was buying a, an Aussie record that I saw on the shelf. Diary of a Madman. I saw it, went, got to have it, and then put it on, and then it's you know, it's yeah. lifelong addiction. Do you think that's something? Yes. I, I don't know. I think it's it's somewhere it's so deep that it would almost be impossible to know because my mom was a music teacher, and at the time I didn't realize it, but I remember things that she used to listen to, and at the time I just thought – that's something my mom listens to. But as I went back and remembered and went back and checked it out again, years later, I'm like, this was like rock music. And I didn't even realize it. Right. And so you had that happen. And then eventually, and then once I got into guitar, obviously guitar is rock based. And I, and, and my friends started coming around and playing more of that. And it just was like the, pr- the foundation had been laid without my knowledge. Right. And it was very easy for me to jump into it because so I guess a combination of how maybe you're born with it and then also you're brought up in it. And because, I mean, it, it would be very hard for people I know who have no experience in it whatsoever. And then the older they get they're they're not going to, it's not going to click. They, they just don't get it. And they probably never will. And that's fine. Right. It's not but everyone. It's something that's deep and, so it's kind of maybe a combination. You're, you're born with it, your personality, and then also fostered by somebody else who was brought up in it and shows it to you. And you're like, yeah, this, it makes sense. It clicks. Okay. Sorry. I had nothing to do with symphony of heaven, but we just went down there. No, no I, well, it, of course it does. It's, it's music, <laughs> man. So, <laughs> so tell me, tell me about entropy. What was the writing process like for that? Especially during the COVID sessions, did you have to do it electronically more or. 
Well, okay. Um, are you ta- are you talking the uh, the latest digital forty five that's come out? Um, yeah. Okay, so the writing process for that, it, it for all the songs on this next album, I let them soak and simmer for a very long time. Probably a, a couple of the last songs came about rather quickly, but a lot of the like entropy was one that has that's been around for a couple of years, and I've just slowly worked on it and slowly come up with ideas. I'd let it sit for a little bit. Right. Um, and then by the time we were able to record, you know, I had all the guitar parts done and all, and, and all that stuff. And then Mason would come in and he would put in his ideas on drums and we would work on it. We'd go over it. And it was really, a lot of it was kind of what he would come up with on the spot for drums. I'd, I'd, I'd give him a basic idea, but then he would, play it more was more natural for him and so it was really kind of a combination of just you know taking a little bit letting things simmer and then letting somebody else take the reins and and come up with their process for it so um, it was a good slow cooker for all these songs really you know it it was that's basically was the process for it when you're writing, so, are you when you're writing? Are you writing with the live setting in mind, or are you writing the like how it'll come across on stage, or are you writing the song for the song's sake? I'd say overall, I'd say about eighty percent of the time, though it's the song for the song's sake. I will think to myself, okay, how is this going to come across on stage? Um, but really, in all honesty, it's more just what I hear and hear to get it out. Um, and then if I, I'll kind of go back and like adjust it. Like, okay, I think it would be really cool. That'll fit really well on an album setting and also fit really well in a live setting. If I did this or if I try that. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, you get your foundation and then you kind of rearrange it a little bit and see what is the best way forward with it. Um, but overall, most of the songs for Symphony of Heaven in general have just been the song for the song's sake, you know, for the, for the most part. Okay. So. so I definitely think Symphony of Heaven and a lot of this music that we're talking about is very therapeutic and cathartic and speaks to you, like you had said, on a deeper level. How does it make you feel when someone, I don't know, in across the world in Japan picks up emails you or says something, Hey, this symphony of record song that you wrote sitting in your basement has connected with them. It's um, I, actually, I had that happen the other day uh, with a reaction video that we watched this person react to this latest song in real time. And she was speechless at the end of it, like almost crying. And I was, I, my, I, my mouth was just hanging open. Like that's it right there. That, that is why one of the main purposes of why I write be, you, to get out how I feel and to identify with other people. And it, it, it feels so transcendent almost in a way when you see that in real time, or you get something from someone that says, this really means a lot to me and spoke to me. Um, there's really not, it's hard to put it into words because you just think I'm just writing this in my basement. Right. Maybe somebody will listen, you know, and then you find out that, they're almost reacting to your music the same way that I react to somebody else's music, right. which is, I mean, that's, that's it right there. That's why you do what you do because you understand it and you want other people to do that too. And is it to share everybody to share that feeling. So it's a, it, it's amazing when we're able to, to have that happen. And uh, it just means the world to me that it, it, people care (laughs) even if it's just a little bit you know it does and on your side of the of the microphone and you know of the guitar it's got to be cathartic as well right it is it's um i'm trying to think what cathartic means (laughs) Um, so it's it helps you get or expel or get rid of all the crap that's inside you yes yeah and that and this whole album that's what this is that's just it's almost like a journal of me writing, going through an experience in my life that was really bad. And I, and I told myself when I was going through it, I was like, as bad as this is, this is going to make for a really good album. <laughs> right. And so I would go back in the lyrical process and I would channel how I felt. And there was, 
So for a year, a couple of years, I, you know, you get over those things, but you kind of put it away in a little box knowing that I'm going to have to revisit this. And so once you revisit it and once all the lyrics were done for the album, and I remember getting done recording the last one and sending it off for mixing. And it was just like, it was almost like a, a page in a book. Like the chat, we were going to the next chapter in my life, and it was just like, it felt closure, completeness, like, because, and then, and then when you get that, when you get to sing it, it's just, it's, it's from a spot so deep that that helps you to just scream it out, like, ah, get it out, you know? So is it like, is it like you're scraping the uh poking the scabs again at every night when you're singing it or when you were recording it well when i when when i'm recording it after after that it becomes one of those like you know time heals all wounds type things so you get to look back at it on, on a different angle right like okay i remember where things were and i'm grateful they're not that way now and then it also says well you know you can share that with people hey you know, been there, come in and put your arm around them. Right. Um, because you're sharing a part of your soul with them. So it's a cell. It almost, it's, I don't go through it every time I sing it. It's just kind of like in the back of my mind, I know that I made it through and I'm right. grateful. Right. So gotcha. it's a good reminder in a way. Right. You know, cool. So what do you, I know you have a show on the 21st, which is what tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Yes. Wow, you guys uh, have been preparing. Where is it local? It is local. It's in Evansville, um, down at the venue. It's called the play. The venue is called the venue. So, and it's like a newer, newer place that's come up after everything was shut down. It, it's it's trying to get off the ground and, and get some shows in. So we're working with the promoter there, and, and uh, she's really great. So it's been it it'll be a really fun time. We've got brutality coming in so a couple of uh brutality and a local band 1984x and then uh color crush which is david our bass players right. uh other you know, good time so nice next for symphony of heaven we are uh we have a uh, one more digital 45 that we're going to put out and then after that will be the full album. So Digital 45 releases, you've, you're going to get about half of the album first. And then there's going to be a, the other half of the album is going to be out on the physical CD and released as a whole. So it's kind of like the people who like to stream and buy singles, you kind of grab them. And then the people who like the full album, you grab them as well. Um, and then after that, really, it's going to be starting to write. I, I've already started uh, writing for, for for themes and everything for the the next album. Oh wow! And working on that and uh, ideas for for lyrics, uh, overall theme, how I want it to sound, and um, so really, it's just keep keep it on going, trying to get get more shows whenever we can. Um, it's it's kind of difficult for us because we're all so spaced out and spread apart. Um, so it's always a good time when we're able to come together and and practice and play a show. And so, you know, just keep moving forward. Just keep marching forward with things as a good, slow and steady uphill climb. Right. Uh, and to me, that is success. That is just doing it because you like it and people like it, too. And if you can right. continue on doing it for a while, uh, what else can you ask for? I you said it perfectly. So, um, and if fans yeah. want to reach out to you, you want to drop your socials. Yeah, we're on Facebook at uh, Symphony of Heaven. We're on Instagram at Symphony of Heaven. Um, we have a Discord group. You can get to all of our stuff at uh, symphony-of-heaven.com. So it's Symphony of Heaven with dashes in between the words. Mm-hmm. And that'll take you to all of our uh, – it'll give you Spotify links. It'll give you Discord server links. We got, we're on Telegram, Facebook, Instagram um youtube there's stuff all over there and so reach out drop us a line and uh, we like to talk to people and make friends and talk about music and just have a good time with everybody awesome. thank you for taking the time man i appreciate it no don't worry don't worry yeah yeah
Good to see you anyway. No, I appreciate it so much, man. Thank you. Yep, again. you got it. We'll yeah. To you. Cheers, man. See you, brother. Bye. Talk to you. Yep. Bye. Ever wonder what a punch from Elton John feels like? Or how you cope with having turned down the chance to be in Nirvana? Or what signal Keith Richards gives when he wants you to get the hell out of his hotel room? Fans of Too Much Effie Perspective don't have to wonder, because they've heard these exact stories and a jillion others on our podcast. I'm Alex Hoffman, former tour manager for Radiohead. And I'm musician and comedy writer Alan Keller. On the TMEP show, we get guests like Nancy Wilson from Heart, Jeremiah Freights from the Lumineers, and Modern Family's Julie Bowen to tell us things they may have only shared with their therapist, clergy, or a TMZ stringer. So join us on Too Much Effing Perspective. That's E-F-F-I-N-G Perspective. The only podcast you crank up to 11. Oh.